Legend of Total War here, and today we're doing another Total War Warhammer 3 Immortal Empires campaign review, this time covering the Demon Prince, also known as Daniel, also known as Prince Yuri from the Prologue campaign. So, in theory, this has to be one of the best ideas that Creative Assembly has come up for in Total War Warhammer 3, or just in Total War Warhammer in general. The idea of customizing your own character and making a custom demon prince and actually being able to change the visuals as he progresses. See, the other characters in the game, when you give them different equipments, it doesn't change their visuals. You know, when they get their legendary items, it doesn't change their visuals. Like, for example, Tyrion is always holding Sunfang, even if he doesn't actually have Sunfang. But the demon prince, however, the visuals do change. The problem here is that, in practice, it's incredibly half-baked because it lacks impact. A lot of these equipment here are just side grades. You go through this entire list here, and most of the stuff from here all the way to the end doesn't really make him that much stronger. So all of this, all of these equipment here are just kind of redundant. And when you get to his best equipment here after you've made a dedication, even at his maximum strength, he's still not really any better than most of the legendary lords out there in the game. There's nothing that he is the best at apart from being able to dress up. That's the only thing he's got. And if you're if you're cool with just playing a dress up game and you just like the visuals, then that's cool. But in terms of gameplay impact, there's just nothing going on here. It has to be one of the most bare bones campaigns in the game because that's his entire faction he doesn't have a tech tree he's the only faction that doesn't have one that's his fucking tech tree right there okay this mechanic here can reach its maximum potential at turn 40 if you know if you if you're aggressive enough in your campaign and then you just don't have any further use for it there's no end game usage for the stuff it doesn't accumulate any further that's just it that's his mechanic and the thing is when the game first came out you know him being able to recruit from all the demon factions that was cool he was undivided you know he was the only one but now you've got warriors of chaos rework which gives them the undivided roster and if you play as bellicor well he can have a full army full of um mixed demon armies in all of all, all of his armies in his faction and you can have your armies commanded by demon princes most of which can have a higher maximum potential than this guy here because this guy's equipment is no better than the regular equipment that you can just find around the world, like a Talisman of Preservation, an Armor of Destiny, all of these kind of things. The Crown of Everlasting Conquest, for example, for the Warriors of Chaos. A lot of this stuff is equal or better than anything that he can get in his body parts here, making this mechanic here complete utter shit. So this is such a half-baked mechanic, and Creative Assembly need to address this at some point to make this character more interesting. It's a great idea in theory, but in practice it just doesn't work for an interesting campaign. It falls completely flat. This faction here is completely forgotten among the other demonic um, improvements made uh, to the other factions. So in terms of recommending this campaign, I would say avoid it. It's just not interesting. It's not necessarily a difficult campaign, but I'd say that you'd get bored very early on. I, that's my personal experience with it. He has nothing going for him. If you want to play with Demon Princes, play with Bellacore. Everything that this guy can do, Bellacore can do better apart from, apart from dressing up. That's the only thing he's got going on. So if you like to change visuals, that's really the only reason to play it. But if you're looking for practical reasons to play him, why bother? He can't confederate anyone. You know, he's alone in his in his particular race as the Demons of Chaos. He doesn't have any other factions he can confederate. You know, he can create other demon lords, uh, but so can the other lords as well. And he doesn't have a tech tree or anything to boost them, so they just it just falls so flat. So yeah, I don't recommend this campaign, but I love the idea of it. I just wish it was better. That's all. Because I really would love to have a good customizable legendary lord that's that becomes an like kind of like a god killer but it's it just doesn't turn out that way there are other characters that can do that way better than him so it falls flat anyway that's the end of this one here guys let me know in the comments below which legendary lord you'd like me to cover next whether or not you agree or disagree with my assessment of the demon prince obviously up until now i've been fairly positive towards most of them but i'm pretty negative towards this one that's because this here is a massive disappointment it's such a crap campaign in my opinion anyway that's the end of this one appreciate you guys don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already and we'll see you next time. Later, guys.